recommended that one. If you're interested to hear how networking will help you make millions of dollars, you are gonna love today's video. Welcome to the next episode of The Alpha Empire, and I am privileged to be here with a friend of mine who I hated with a passion and then I got to know him, and he's honestly like the best dude I know. And so, Antonio Centeno, everybody on the Alpha Empire channel, say what's up. Guys, great to see you, and uh, Aaron, thanks for having me. So the deal is, this bromance goes way back. All way right? back. Way back. Early days, YouTube, I started posting videos. You guys know that, right? And all of a sudden, one day, I see this dude with these hands, right? Not really moving, it was just like, it was like just hands. And I'm like, who is this son of a bitch talking about men's style and fashion? It was Antonio. Why did you start posting videos? So I had a blog and we could see the numbers and they were doing well, but I couldn't see the numbers publicly. And I saw Aaron's videos and I saw his numbers publicly. I'm like, you know what? This guy does not know what he's talking about. He doesn't know his head from his ass. He was correct. Yeah, I could talk a lot more, especially formal wear, suits and things like that. I owned a clothier at the time. So I started to put up videos talking mostly about formal menswear. And uh, But it was your wife. It was your wife who said, stop bitching about this annoying True. little Italian. True. Put up or shut up. I think I saw Aaron, he had about a million total views. And that's when I took notice, I'm like, oh, interesting. And then you were at four million yeah. very quickly. And I'm like, okay, wow. And I could see the numbers. And I think that outside metric, being able to see the scoreboard, it lit, uh, you know, just, I, I have to be doing this. And especially when you see somebody that's getting some things wrong, doesn't know, you know, what they're talking about. You're like, I can do this better. <laughs> I still hate you. <laughs> I'm getting it. Okay. So anyway, so he starts posting videos. Um, he had a big website. Um, you got your start, and and this video is going to be a little bit like kind of like our story, his story, and then talk talking a little bit more specifically about the power of networking because you were the person that really taught me that I was wrong in terms of of the way that I was thinking about things in terms of my I, I I'm usually wrong, but. With this, I was really wrong. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but tell everybody, cause your story and how you kind of got started um, is pretty fascinating. I don't wanna go into like way back machine, but you know, you grew up, you know, without a lot of money, you grew up kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, ish. But I'd say trailer park, West Texas, you know, we had the tires on top to protect us from the lightning. Anytime tornadoes <laughs> show up, you open all the windows so you don't get sucked up. I mean. Multiple homes were repossessed, cars were repossessed. I grew up around people that didn't know how to manage money. I ended up joining the Marine Corps out of college and it was something that uh, taught me a lot. I got a lot of great, crazy experiences, but I realized getting out of the Marines in 2003 after Iraq, I was like, I don't have any skills except blowing stuff up. So I went to business school at Texas. After that, took a job up in Wisconsin, was promptly fired. And at that point I realized, you know what? What a great time to go into business for myself. So. I started an online custom clothier. And this, this was early days. 2007. Yeah. 2007 was early days in terms of like internet, right? Yeah, there were two other companies. I started doing this in the entire world, but my thoughts were Mark Cuban had just a couple, a year or two before bought a jet online. I'm like, well, why wouldn't people buy suits, custom made suits online? So I had this innovative idea, I think at the time, to be <laughs> able to enter people, enter their measurements and we build a suit. And I had a factory in Thailand I was working with and it was a, you know, it was great until it wasn't, until I realized, I was bringing in money, but I was bleeding money and my expenses were outpacing my revenue and that you can't scale that. And uh, yeah. It, <laughs> that, so, that model doesn't work very yes. long. So I went through a bankruptcy, another thing Aaron and I have in common. And uh, I realized, you know what? I am decent at one thing, it seems like online, and that's creating content because we were getting all of this organic traffic. We had probably a couple hundred at the time articles that were getting us 100,000 visitors a month, which at the time- was Where somewhere. was that traffic coming from? Very important part of the story. Well, I was writing with the Art of Manliness and I was writing with my own blog, A Tailored Suit, but the Art of Manliness picked me up, Brett over there, and I saw what he was doing. He, his, his website was monstrous. Yeah, at the time. And the, the other thing I thought about the other day about him, is that he was kind of like this whole like manosphere movement. He was so ahead of his time. Yeah. He really was like manliness. Like, and, and back in the day, it wasn't like this like negative thing, but now it's become so like kind of overtly. Well, even then it was a little bit like people always thought, well, the art of manliness, what's that? And that's a whole separate, you know, Brett and what he did over there. He did come through it, I think, with very solid intentions and his execution was really good. I mean, him and his wife, 
Um, Kate, to this day, still pretty much write all the articles. They are, pay attention to the details, to quality, and you know, it is affected by their religious beliefs, their personal beliefs. That being said, they're, they've built a very happy life. For me to be able to see that, somebody making hundreds of thousands of the time dollars straight from advertising, not having to sell a physical product, I was like, okay, there's something here. And this, real quick, and this was back in the day when the real money, I thought anyway, was to have a website that was super popular, that got a lot of traffic, and then you could basically get advertising. That was early days, kind of like internet, you know, how you made a lot of money, how you scaled. And, and there were still yeah. there were still many people like food blogs. I mean, this ad thrive network. They're you making, still make a lot yeah. of money through advertising. Yeah, yeah, we still, but I, I know people that are making millions of dollars still with just advertising on their websites, but it's become harder that that revenue. You revenue. need a ton of traffic to make yes. money on on a website yeah. in terms of advertising. Go on. And still, we, we get, you know, we have our website, of course, that's where we started. We get about 1.2 million visitors a month to our website. And that's very, you know, it, it, but it doesn't, it pays. So on that, let me ask, how much can you make a month just on that, like from that traffic, what would you about make? About 20,000, depending on what advertising network you're with. Uh, if, the, if I was a food blog, I'd probably be making 50,000. And again, if you go directly to Google, Google's gonna treat you like a redheaded stepchild and only pay you like 5,000. But if you were to go with a higher end network, which is going to vet you, make sure that you are good to go and you meet their standards, but you can make, you know, probably 10 times to 20 times that because they'll go negotiate better deals. How much easier do you think it would be now doing a website with articles with, with chat GPT? Much harder. Much, much harder. Yeah. Th so I don't think that chat GPT or, or AI is going to replace writers. It, to me, what it did is it took the best writers and it just made them more efficient and effective. But if you were a crappy writer or if you thought you could just, you know, create articles and have link farms, that stuff is the lower end is getting killed by AI, but the higher end, for me, this is just simply like a surgeon going from a, a physical knife to using lasers. It just enhanced him, reduced infection, you know, it just makes it more, it makes the best more efficient and effective. Okay. So anyway, go on with your story. You were writing Art of Manliness. That got you popular. That got you... Yeah, we, we were getting yeah. traffic through it, but I saw this, this goofball over here on YouTube kicking ass, and I'm like, you know, I can do this. And, and I actually hated typing and writing articles. Uh, so it was, it was an easier lift for me. And that's one thing. But the business ended up, so you were, you were, you were doing videos. Was it driving traffic to a tailored suit, your suit company you at know, the not, time? Not as much, uh, but it, but it was. And it was something that we could send direct traffic to. Uh, I found it wasn't necessarily bringing me the, the kind of customers that I wanted. And I realized I could make more money with, I think this is when we started talking. I think you reached out, you're like, hey, can I use some of your written content? And he said, and I, I was very gracious. I said, of course you can. He said, F you, little man. <laughs> he said, no. no. That's the, he doesn't remember this. I need to find I the email. I can probably I, don't I can probably Google search the yeah, email. I think you should find the email. Okay, but actually that was probably my alpha m image consulting at gmail.com. Anyway, yeah. uh, so so the way that he and I ended up coming together was I reached out to him and I said, hey, I at the time was like, you know what? I want to build myself a, an amazing website, right? That got a lot of traffic, that I'd be making a lot of money through advertising. And so I came up with the idea of alpha m.com it was actually i am alpha m.com back then and the idea was at first i was going to basically charge membership to this website and that's kind of how i i you wanted to start yeah, yeah i, I yeah. wanted to start a membership website but the problem with the membership website is that you need content behind the paywall in order to basically make it valuable for people and so i was like okay i came up with and i did that business a hundred percent wrong okay um but I went to Antonio, I said, hey, you've got all these articles, could I basically use them on my website? I'm gonna create a lot of content, a lot of video content, can I use them just to have them? Thinking he was gonna be like, yeah, sure, no problem, kid, right? He said, no. And I said, okay. <laughs> and you don't remember, but yeah, I, I was like, yeah. I'm like, this asshole. So anyway, fast forward, I came out with my membership website, and I don't know how, I guess we like, 
emailed a few times, but at the time we were really the only ones in the men's style space. There weren't too many. Yeah. On YouTube. There were other people that were doing like blogs and blogs, and not blogs, but blogs, like uh, The Modest Man, Primer Magazine, The Art of Man Manly, not The Art of Manliness, um, Masculine Style, who were some of those other guys? That yeah, yeah, there were a lot on Blogger, a lot, tons of guys, you know, permanent, yeah, permanent style. I'm talking, yeah, but I'm yeah. talking about like the, the men for lunch, like when we went out to, when we met in Anaheim. Yeah, I mean, so so yeah, he reaches out to me. Yeah. So he reaches out to me and says, "Hey, long story short, we had a little bit of a relationship. We weren't really like friends or anything like that. I wouldn't consider us friends back then. But then one day, you reached out to me. You said, "Hey." Well, the thing is, I considered him a friend. I considered not. him a peer. <laughs> and anyone that is in the same space as me, I'm like, you know, you're pretty rare. If you're talking about style, you're you're a man. That's just not a whole lot of us. So it was. I was heading out to VidCon in California, and I'm like, "Hey, you want to?" Go out there. What year was me? that? I don't remember. 2013, don't 2014. I'm maybe? not sure. Yeah, something like that. And it was just, you know, I approached this as, hey, there's a big market. This is growing. Uh, why would I not want to get to know this other guy that's doing some really cool stuff? And so I invited him to meet me out there. And, and I yeah. thought to myself, okay, so a few things. Number one, I hate to travel. Number two, I thought that he was my competition. And so that is one of the biggest learnings that he has helped me is that, or Antonio has helped me with, is changing my perception of what competition actually means. Because at the time, you know, I was like, if I'm getting views, he's not getting views. It was this like very like this like it's mine or yours, and if I'm winning, you're losing, and if you're winning, that means I'm losing. I didn't look at it as if we come together, we learn from each other, we use each other in terms of helping, you know, leveraging experience and all that. We can basically build something bigger, stronger, and we're all going to win. And so when he reached out to me and said, hey, I'm going to VidCon, it's in California, would you be interested in meeting up? And while we're out there, why don't we like actually get together with some of these other guys that he knew or that he would reach out to? Because at the time, I was a very lonely, lonely entrepreneur. And that's one of the downsides to being an entrepreneur is yep. that it's a lonely road. And so, you know, you don't have people to share experiences with. You don't have people to commiserate with or call and be like, oh my God, this customer, what an ass. Like, you don't have that, right? And so I thought, you know what? I got to take a chance. Let me take a chance. And so I went to Suit Supply. I got two suits, new suits. I'm like, I'm going to look smooth. You did look good. I look good too, right? And uh, I remember, and I'm like, let me just give it a shot. And so I went out, met you, met Ryan Masters, met Brock the first night we yep. went to dinner, yep. and the rest, as they say, is history. So we meet, long story short, we end up having this like kind of uh, this collective of other people that were just like us, yep. and we thought, why don't we try and do this a little bit bigger? And so we decided to create the, at the time it was called StyleCon, because pretty much all of the content and the creators that were coming in that we knew were in the men's style space. And so we decided to try to basically build something in Atlanta. Because I lived in Atlanta, it was definitely more of a destination that had a better airport than Wausau, Wisconsin, yep. where Antonio is from. And so um, we ended up doing it here. One thing led to another. And over the years, we built a massive, in our eyes, a massive conference Massive though for us was, you know, 300, 400 people. It wasn't yeah. massive, but the thing that really happened was the friendships, the relationships, and the network of amazing people. This was what was really the most beneficial thing that came out of it in friendships. And so talk a little bit um, about the power of networking and some networking tips. Where can people go if they're looking, if they're seeking, if they're looking for their quote unquote tribe? What would you recommend people do in order to basically facilitate, facilitate friendships, facilitate networks? Because as Jordan Harbinger says, you know, he's a big proponent of it's not your net worth is your network. That's like something that he loves to say. Yeah. And Jordan, Jordan Harbinger, and real quick before you go, an incredible story, right? Jordan had a partner, AJ, and they ran this, this, this company, The Art of Charm. It was an online, basically like dating coaching program that basically would do like things in person, but they also had this, a podcast portion of that. And so they had a falling out and basically Jordan walked away from the money-making business, which was the coaching for single men. And he decided he was going to go and, and basically leave. There was a legal fight and all this stuff and just start his podcast or double down on his podcast. And one of the things that he would always talk to me about, and he's built it into just an amazing multi-million dollar 
you know, entity. I mean, he's killing it right yeah. now with his podcast. Yeah. And he, he would always say to me, you know, what he would do is basically every day while he's sitting there like on the toilet, he would just reach out to some of the people that were contacts just to say, hey, thinking about you, how are you doing? It was this contact. Three people. Three people. Day. Yep. Yep. Day. Three people every day he would do this. And it's funny because you know when he's going through his rotation because every like six months I got a text from Jordan and be like, hey, yeah. how are the cats? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm yeah. like, they're good. And so anyway, talk a little bit about networking because it is so incredibly powerful. When I learned to do it or when I met you, that was really the time when my business and my, my kind of professional career really started to take off and escalate. And I attribute that to finally being around like-minded people that were inspiring, that were uplifting, and that could help point me in the right direction and share some of the experiences that they met. Well, I, I think you were talking about a little bit earlier how you viewed me as competition, and I'm not competition. Uh, it, Yes, there is true maybe competition in a sports game when there can only be one victor and you've got that very, you know, it's going to be win or loss. But in business, that's not the case. There were huge markets here. And I realized, it, you know, if it's not a dying market, really, you don't, you're, other realtors in a large, you know, they're not necessarily competition, especially if you can learn from them. So I would say take a step back and reframe how you're looking at those around you because those other, and I'll use real estate as an example because it's viewed as very competitive and most people would say other realtors are your competition, but also other realtors can, they understand you like nobody else. They know what it's like to work with people that just see house after house after house and never buy. They know what it's like to have, you know, that to all of a sudden close that deal that changes your entire year. They know what it's like to, you know, have some, to, all the, all the pain that you go through, they understand it like nobody else. And I knew that Aaron would understand what it was like to be a creator, to actually do, put in all that work, to be a fellow entrepreneur. Um, cross country, my nephews are running it. And these kids, even though they are competing against each other, one thing I love about it, and I ran cross country as well, is that cross country kids, especially when you're not in first, second, or third place, you're, you're edgy, you're pushing on your, these other people from even other schools. You're like, hey man, you know, you see somebody slowing down, somebody dying, and you know that could be you. So, so I used to do this all the time, like, hey man, come on, like you're not gonna let me beat you. And we, you play these games with each other and you're actually trying, because you realize this person, when they pick it up, especially when you're on a three or a five mile run, Oftentimes there's nobody else around you. So if you lose I'm this I'm gonna remind guy, you of this when I'm when we're running tomorrow morning. Yeah. Come uh, on, man, you're not gonna let hey, me beat you. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I normally kick his ass. But uh, you know, the point being is don't reframe these competitors actually as you're more of it, like you're in this together. And especially again, in a market that has room to grow. And if you want to even grow out of that market, because somebody has skills that you can take. And that's why every time I meet somebody, I'm always trying to approach it from what can I learn from them? And can I genuinely approach as I, I'm interested in this person. For me, I don't go after, yes, there are things I want. Of course, I want money like anyone else. I want to have greater success. I want to be able to, you know, I know many of you guys are looking for a partner, but, but if you approach a potential, you know, another person, not trying to take anything from them, but looking at, hey, is there something I can give, which almost costs me nothing. Many of you guys are going to have a skill set and you may not even view it as, you know, I, I had a woman I was speaking to, you know, a couple years ago, I still stay in touch with her. I would just, she would spend, you know, an hour kind of picking my brain and I didn't mind because these were things that were very obvious to me when it comes to video marketing and building up. But for her, it was, it really changed the trajectory of her business. And she was always more than help, happy to, to help me with other areas in my business where I was weak. And that's, I think the beauty of, I don't even like the word networking. To me, it's just having friends who happen to be other business people, happen to be interested in subjects you're interested in, and you you grow and you build off each other. You know, it's not one plus one equals two, it's one plus one equals five. Maybe that's the title of the video, how to make better friends. Yeah, could do it's that. It's better friends. Better. So you've got a lot of really good friends. I do have a lot friends. of really successful friends. He yeah. is the master when it comes to networking. I remember when I met him the first time at that VidCon, I'm just watching this guy work the room and I'm just sitting there like the little like weird kid in the corner just like looking, I'm like, I don't wanna to talk to anybody. Well, first up, assume that people like you when you start talking to them. Next up, genuinely be interested in them and listen. And it's- What does it be interested and not interesting? Yeah, I, I'm interested in learning more about more, I, I ask good questions. I 
actively listen, meaning that I'm not waiting for my turn to speak. I actually am listening to what they say. I will ask for clarification, go into it a little bit deeper. And you find that after you've seen most people that are worth staying in touch with, after you do this for three to five minutes, they become very curious as to who you are and what you're doing. And all of a sudden, they're ready to active listen because they've been able to say everything that they wanted to say. And in fact, and you remember these things about this person. I, I sometimes write, I oftentimes write somebody's name down because I can't remember names. People are cool with me writing their name, putting it right in my, my, my phone. And then when I see them or I see someone they should be talking to, I'm all about, I think one of the reasons our conference was so successful and people still talk about this is that Aaron and I viewed our job is to facilitate introductions. We were, yes, the owners of the conference, but we weren't above, uh, going around, you know, and just make, if we saw somebody awkward in a corner, because we had been that person at events before. Not, not that awkward. No, I've never there, been there as were, awkward there as were some, There people. were some <laughs> awkward. But point being is we would try to say, hey, you know, that guy really knows his stuff when it comes to e-commerce. This person really knows his stuff when it comes to videography. They should talk. They should at least understand who they are. So being able to quickly make introductions to break the ice, to get two people together that Where? should be speaking. Let's talk about because coincidentally in 15 minutes, we've got to go meet. True. Yeah. We're we've got a networking thing that he set up. He's like, Hey, we only have one thing to do while I'm there. I invited some other YouTubers to go get coffee. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, what? Okay. That's another key thing is find, you know, get around people that you have something you're passionate or you're excited or you want to get better at because even you know, that right there is what's going to draw you and that one unique interest is going to keep you guys aligned and always gives you something to talk about. Where? Before we wrap this video up, where would you recommend people go in terms of finding better friends? Whew, I, I would just simply look around at... I personally feel that there is a desire physically. People want to be engaging with each other. So I would say, who do you have in your local network? Who Networking you, groups. Who can you revive with your Facebook friends? Well, I mean, literally you've got 700 Facebook friends, 650 which you haven't spoken to in a year. How about you start sending just simply messages via Facebook or whatever platform it is. Go through your phone, similar to Jordan Harbinger. You know, look at, hey, who haven't you messaged forever? And it's going to be okay that half these people, expect half the people not to respond to you. But guess what? If you're sending out two messages, or I'm sorry, four messages, eight messages a day, you're going to get four responses a day. And it's okay. I've had people, I've reached out to them three to four times over the period of three to four months. And then finally, they get back to me. My friend John Sephoric, he wrote the, uh, the book, The Wealthy Gardener. He finally got back to me. And this is actually a long one. This was almost a year. And I'd written him like four or five times. Turns out he, he got really bad COVID. He almost died and he was in the hospital. And he just, he, you know, he said, I'm like, Antonio, I've had low energy, but every time I see your messages, it makes me smile. And I'm just simply, I don't want anything from Networking that. groups yeah. Yeah. in your local area. I'm trying to get to where, like where is a good place like for online entrepreneurs to come together? Where would you look? Just if there's like a niche or something that you're interested in, you know, where do those people hang out? Where are they? Where are they basically congregating? Yep. Whether or not it's physically congregating or, um, or online. Also, conferences are a great way. If there's something that you're interested in or an area of business or expertise that you're looking to develop. Highly recommend conferences. And even if you can't afford the ticket, then simply show up and hang around the fringes and know who's going to be there. That's an easy way. I see people do this. Hotel all the bars. Time. Yep. Hotel bars. Also, like I've heard people talk about, hey, like I can't afford to go, but I know the hotel that all these like successful people are going to be at. I'm going to go and just kind of hang out at the bar. Our buddy and Ryan's been picking up women at hotel bars. Worked out really well for him. Who? Masters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, anyway, um, networking groups are another great one um, in your local area. Um, a lot of like the, the Chamber of Commerce, like there are a lot of things in your community. I would basically go and look to see if there was a Facebook like community group for your area, business people, or whatever area you may be interested in. Um, I know that there's always things like in Marietta about business people getting together, doing things, and uh, I never go because <laughs> I'm still antisocial. Anyway, I don't know. That's I don't know. It. If you got any value from this, hopefully you did. Thank you for coming and hanging with me. We're going to film some more videos. That's where we're going to wrap things up. Guys, thank you so much. Antonio Centeno in the house. And uh, I can't believe you wouldn't let me use your fucking articles. <laughs> he still brings this up. You I, I see no evidence.